so tell us about swara yeah swara uh, commonly translated as note so first we will see what swara is uh, anada having a definite single frequency is called a swara so we have seen on, in our in our previous videos that nada gives rise to shrutis shrutis give rise to swaras and uh, finally swaras uh, give rise to ragas and um, however ragas after having uh, you know after having been created out of uh, swaras they actually transcend the swaras and they go, they go by shrutis so that part we will see later now what we can understand from this is that um, in an octave or sthayi between two shadjas or sa we have identified tw 22 uh, pitch variations or um, the finest intervals which we call as shrutis out of this these 22 shrutis selected few uh, shrutis to which we can assign definite frequencies will be termed as swaras so it is here important to understand what's the difference between a shruti and swara both shruti and swara uh, have frequencies measurable frequencies you can you can uh, give a value but uh, the frequency of a swara is more uh, striking it is more pronounced it is more notable and swaras as defined by sangeeta ratnakara swaras have the ability to uh, delight the human mind on their own shrutis don't have that swaras have the ability to delight the human mind on their own even without the help of a raga by just saying ma pa da ni re sa ni da just the swara it has it has a pleasing effect so i don't need the help of a raga and one an another special feature of swara is that it leads to the creation of uh, ragas so that is how these are the two basic points Uh, based on which uh, 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 swara is different from a shruti as defined in our tradition and uh, going by sangeeta ratnakara again it says shruti bhya syuhu swara ha shadjarsha ba gandhara madhyama ha panchamo daivataschata nishada iti saptate tesham samya ha sarigama padhani itya paramata ha so shruti bhya syuhu swara ha swara sa are created out of shrutis and they are 7 in number shadja rishabha gandhara madhyama panchama daivata and nishada and their symbols are sari gama padhani so when you symbols in the sense when you when you sing you don't sing shadja rishabha gandhara you will have to shorten it right. so you sing the sari gama padhani so these can be called as the sol fa syllables of our uh, music right. just like how you have the do re mi fa sol la ti right, in right. western music these are our uh, sol fa syllables in, in fact it is india's contribution again to world musicology Indian musicians were the Indian musicologists were the earliest to devise this uh, full-fledged scheme of seven swaras, and of course this is derived from the Samaveda, uh, the Archika, Gathika, Samika, Swarantara, Audava, Shadava, and Sampurna. That is how the system of seven swaras uh, developed and evolved, and um, after, and it has remained unaltered even to this date. Nobody has been able to add an eighth swara. Right. and nobody has been able to remove a swara from the list as well so it is india's contribution and it has been accepted by all other systems of uh, music across the globe and um, these seven names also have significance it's they are not just random names shadja it means shatja it is the swara which gives rise to the next six swaras ri ga ma pa dha ni uh, the position of these swaras is determined by where you fix the sa if you if your your sa is not not fixed your ri ga ma will not have any identity so shat ja it gives rise to the other six swaras madhyama being the middle swara out of the seven this is the fourth in the position so being the middle swara it is the madhyama panchama being the fifth swara nishada the nishidanti swara sarve the last swara the swaras end here so that is the nishada so all these names have a lot of significance and they are extremely meaningful very nice so that is about uh, swaras and uh, what is note you know swara is often translated as uh, note this is something which uh, you know bothers me very much because i see lot of indian musicians 
even when teaching their students you know when uh, teaching music they say um, sing this note properly sa note re note ga note you know they say like that which is extremely disturbing uh, so let's understand what um, uh, let's understand what a note is the harvard dictionary of music defines a note as a symbol used in musical notation to represent the duration of a sound and when placed upon a staff to indicate its pitch more generally the pitch itself uh, another important book uh, music and appreciation it says pitches are notated by the placement of notes on a staff a note is a black or white oval to which a stem and flags can be added the higher a note is placed on the staff the higher its pitch so from these two definitions it is clear that note means pitches in an octave generally it means pitches in an octave and specifically it means the symbolic representation of the pitches and the duration in a musical notation so if you have seen a western musical the staff notation written yeah the staff notation which they use it has five i think five lines it will be lines right and these notes these symbols are placed on at different places on those lines but can you say that that's one meaning of note huh. the sound itself is the note but this is just a way of writing it right in the both the both the definitions are there here right. you know one one it says generally it means pitches in an octave right. so so let's say we put aside the written written the yes of, because written. that's not as well yes if we take the other definition pitches in an octave it yes. says the general definition is pitches in an octave uh -huh. so going by this if you go back to the definition of semitone how different is it from a semitone semitone is also pitches in an octave right note is also pitches in an octave So, what is the difference between a semitone and note? It's not very clear. But in our tradition, shrutis are twenty-two, swaras are seven. Shrutis are different from swaras. Swaras are born out of shrutis, and they subsequently lead to the creation of ragas. So, the identity of swara is totally uh, different. It has its own independent existence, and it has it has its own value. But here, a note is nothing but a pitch which you indicate in a Uh, in a particular uh, frequency we you place it there and how you write it basically so here again swara is not equal to note because very that good. is the um, it's very clear and very interesting very very clear so you should all you musicians and teachers you have to be careful about translating swara as note uh, and 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 uh, study more and more pra with practitioners to understand the difference exactly So it is likely that some of these western concepts historically were derived based on indian influence at some places if you look at books on western uh, music at some places it recognizes that some of these elements have been uh, borrowed uh, from non western musical cultures and there they put so many other systems of music in that bracket yeah they always like to do that yeah. one way to one way to avoid crediting indian thought yes. is to say this is all the tradition of the world everybody is like that jung does that Uh, this whole idea that everybody had this and yes. so on you know to uh, to dilute it down yeah. they do this with meditation they do it with yoga they do yeah. it with everything in order not to give credit to a particular civilization because then then it would bother them yes yes somewhere here and there in their books you find india indian system indian music here and so there so some buddy has to write the history of indian influences on western music yes very important okay. yes so one of the projects that you should do is to find us such a scholar oh wonderful idea <laughs> and this is a good topic the swara topic is a very important one yes to illustrate this in yes yes